All right, I'm going to answer a question that was put to me. Hi, Steph. Hope you're doing great. I'm almost done going through the interactive web developer course, and it's great. Lots of great stuff to learn and priceless tips that would take a long time to learn on the wild. I have worked with WordPress before for about three years already and have built about a dozen live websites, some commercial, some personal. However, for my next venture, I'm trying to move past WordPress and publish with only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. My question is, is there anything else that's necessary for working safe websites? So let me just point out before I go on with her email. If you're just publishing HTML and CSS websites with a bit of a JavaScript, that's, that is as about as safe as it gets by default because the security holes in most websites is when you are doing server-side coding, PHP, backend JavaScript with Node, Java, Python Django, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's when you can find more security vulnerabilities. Beyond that, it's about, generally speaking, just your server being locked down and your server hosting uh, company should lock down the server by default. That said, there are things you could put into your web page, I suppose. I'm trying to avoid jargon here. In the old days when people used to use something like Flash, which was a plugin, it's plugged in functionality into a site, that was a major security vulnerability. But generally speaking, if you stick to vanilla HTML5 and CSS3, you do limited JavaScript, that's as about as safe as it's going to be in terms of what you write into your web page, what you write in terms of code into your web page. She continues, I know that technically only an index.html file with proper meta tags is necessary, but what about security, performance, SEO, and so on? WordPress has countless plugins to help with these aspects, and I would assume there's more code under the hood included in WordPress to make sure websites work properly. Is a vanilla HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript website loaded onto the server really all it takes? Thanks and best regards. So let me read my answer and then I'll elaborate a little bit further for this video. Congrats on finishing the course. If the website is just HTML, CSS and some JS, it is safe almost by default. Websites become less safe when you turn them into web apps, meaning you have some programming behind them where you are interacting with the server in some meaningful way with Python, JavaScript, Node, Java, PHP.net, etc. You get the idea. Using any server-side programming language can potentially open up your site to some vulnerability. So my bottom line advice is just write clean, simple modular code and you should be fine. So let me elaborate on this. So she asked about uh, what about security, performance, SEO, and so on. So with security, as I said, if you're writing HTML, CSS with a little bit of JavaScript, chances are you're pretty cool. When you start writing JavaScript, there could be some issues there. So just make sure you know what you're doing in that regard. But again, because it's all client-side code, and since you did my course, you understand what I mean by that, it's far safer. It's far safer. Most of the vulnerability is going to be in terms of your server configuration. That's really up to your hosting company to take care of that, unless you're taking care of your own hosting, which you should only do on very rare situations. All right, how about performance? Performance these days is much more about, again, server-side programming when you write your PHP app or your Python Django app. And most of the performance issues with web apps is actually hitting the database, is actually interacting with some database, pulling information from that, and then constructing the, constructing the page on the fly and sending it out to the uh, person visiting your website. When it comes to plain old HTML and CSS pages where you're just serving up those, there's literally no performance hit that's appreciable. It's not even an issue. The performance hit typically for most web apps and sites is hitting that database. So you don't have to worry about that. Because WordPress is a PHP based web application that's hitting a database, every time you view a WordPress page, you're hitting a database unless you got some fancy caching going on. So they have to have all kinds of 
performance enhancements and so on to speed it up and to lock it down in terms of security. Most of PHP security issues are derived from the plugin architecture. As you know, PHP allows you to add these plugins. Well, it's, it's in these plugins is where you're gonna see a lot of security issues. That's why when you're using WordPress plugins, you better research them well. Uh, commercial plugins are probably a better choice because when people are being paid to write a plugin, they're probably gonna make them safer. But again, make sure you know you've read your reviews, make sure you know what plugins you're using. That's a big source of security issues with WordPress plugins and the themes because a lot of themes use a lot of interesting code behind the scenes as well, so be careful about that. What about SEO, search engine optimization? That's kind of a, uh, a holdover terminology, search, in, uh, search engine optimization from a time when websites were built in such a way that they were not transparent to search engines. They uh, made it hard. A lot of the old school techniques for building sites built them in such a way that they didn't reveal what they were about to search engines and search engines had trouble figuring them out, classifying them. So SEO was a big part, was cleaning up the code, adding things to the code and to the site to, uh, to make them transparent to search engines. But if you're building websites these days with modern HTML and CSS3, which everybody is, they're pre-optimized in that regard. Now, Search engine optimization could also include just writing good text with certain keywords that are uh, relevant to the, your subject of your site. But again, largely these days, if you build your site using modern standards, which everybody does, 99.99% .99 of us do, it's not an issue. Search engine optimization really these days is more about web marketing. It's about setting up your web marketing strategy to get people to come to your site but the site itself, if you just, as I said, you're building with modern techniques, SEO is uh, old school, it doesn't need to be done. It's all kind of built in, right? Also, the search engines, mainly Google, just they're so much more capable now they, nowadays anyway. So let me end off this uh, email and briefly talk about static site generators. As I said, the best performance websites and the safest websites by default are just HTML and CSS websites that are pre-built. And then when somebody comes to a website and requests, I don't know, a page on your product, that page has already been built and the web server just sends them that page, which is just HTML and CSS text and normal text. Whereas the typical dynamic website, that's the old term, a typical web app, each and every single page is, is actually built by the server on the fly. So WordPress does that. Every time a page is requested, WordPress will go to the database, grab the information about the page and build it up, and then construct the HTML and send it to the user. That's where you get the performance hit, that processing of the page. So, so static websites and static site generators are highly, 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 highly performant because the pages are all pre-built, if you will. So it's just like boom, boom, boom. No processing to generate a page. The pages are already generated. That's one reason why people like static site generators, and sometimes that makes sense. Now, there are other solutions as well. You can have caching layers with PHP and Django with Python and Ruby Rails, et cetera, et cetera. There's many ways to skin that cat, but at the end of the day, the less the server processes with every time somebody requests a page from your site, uh, the more performant your site will be. In terms of bandwidth, that might be an issue. So if your site is video-centric, lots of videos, and you're trying to serve your videos from your own web server, that will likely be an issue if you have a lot of traffic and so these days I say never uh, serve video off your own servers. That's just stupid. You should serve them off uh, YouTube or get a Vimeo account and serve them that way. This way you don't have to put that heavy load of moving video from your web server to somebody's browser. So there you go. In terms of performance, uh, static sites, HTML, CSS sites that are, not, that are not generated on the fly, whether you just write your own sites and upload your HTML pages or use a static site generator, they're going to be the most performant by default. 
and they're gonna be the safest by default. Anyway, to conclude, to answer this person's question, Yep, if you're just writing HTML, CSS, and a little JavaScript, just make sure your JavaScript is not doing anything uh, wonky. Most of the time it isn't. You should be good to go. All right, I hope that helps. If you want to keep in touch with me directly, sign up to my Need to Nerd newsletter below. The advantage to you is that you're going to get access to content that I will not publish on YouTube or any other social media platform. The reason I'm putting out the newsletter is because I want to have direct communications with the audience. I don't want to be dependent on any social media platform, whether it be YouTube or Instagram or Twitter. So there you have it. Subscribe to the newsletter. If you want to learn the web stack from a 20 plus year veteran, check out my courses below. If you want to learn Python from somebody who's been writing code for 20 plus years, check out my Python course below. I have my own platform, Studio Web which is used by schools all over the world. And it's a unique interactive training system that's very different from anything else out there. And it was designed from the ground up to teach only code. So it's extremely effective at doing that. All right, that's it for this video. See you in the next.